All right, welcome back, Sports Show on this DM YouTube College Football, Michigan continuing the cupcake schedule. I'm just gonna start calling the Michigan little Debbies. It's all it is is fucking candy and snacks. Everybody they're fucking playing is a route Rutgers, 31 to seven. Uh, I don't know what's going on with the run game. Corum did almost finish with 100 yards, had 97 yards, but Edwards looked awful. I do not have Michigan in my top four, by the way. Once we go over our little uh, top ten, just think the schedule is awful. Oregon smacking the living shit. I like Colorado, 42 to six. They play for wins, not clicks over here. 552 total yards, only 199 for Colorado. 282 yards on the ground for Oregon. Do you think the Cinderella season is over for Colorado? I think they have a couple more, I don't want to call them upset wins, but they do play Utah and USC moving forward. But it's Colorado down for the count. Yeah, it's. Uh, did you see the video that came out from Oregon about the game? They had clips of the pregame, and Colorado was talking every piece of shit they could. <laughs> We're going to demolish you. You're not even going to, you can't even be on the field with us. And then they went out there and they got that ass text. Yeah. You, the school down the road didn't learn that under the D'Antonio era, and Dion's team's learning that under his era. Don't fucking talk shit. Let your play do the talk. Yeah, I think the only thing with that Colorado team, I think Dion's going to grab the recruits, but yeah, I agree, though. I mean, they, they had a lot of uh, yapping in the mouth coming in almost every game they had, and it was from both sides, though. TCU gave them a little yeah. bit of shit. Nebraska did, too, but didn't live up to it in this game as they get slaughtered 42-6. to Georgia beating the shit out of University of Alabama, Birmingham Dragons. Say that three times fast. 49 to 21. Speaking of cupcake schedules. Yeah, right. Georgia. <laughs> At least they play in the SEC. Texas, 38 to 6. Destroying Baylor. Uh, Texas rolling on here. I think they're ranked number three. The rankings came yeah, out. Yeah, they're back. They really are. Yeah, yeah. Florida State, 31 24. Oh, I love seeing some hateful dabble Sweeney on the sideline. Yeah. Rolling them in overtime. Florida State goes on to 4-0. Johnny Wilson, the big wide receiver, over 300 yards now on the season for Florida State. USC, I actually watched this entire game. USC, man, looked kind of uh, out of sorts out there. A lot of fumbles, very sloppy play for USC, but they do win. Eight sacks against Arizona State, 42-28. And Alabama, another team kind of all over the place, 24-10. Uh, not the same dominating Alabama team that we're used to seeing, huh? No, they... Uh... They, they leveled out. Saban had his era in the sun with doing all the shady business, and now everybody can do the shady business, so he's back down to earth. Doing the shady business. Ooh, sounds like some behind-the-scenes shit going on over there. Penn State smacking the shit out of Iowa. 31 to nothing. Aller, four touchdowns. Penn State, man, like we've talked about this, I think, the nauseam at this point, but God, is the Big Ten going to be loaded next season with quarterbacks? Yeah, it is. And Aller might be at the top of that. Moving forward, he had four touchdowns against Iowa, Washington. Um, oh, go on. On that topic real quick, they got to be the favorite to win the Big Ten right now, right? Oh, Penn like, State? For me, watching Michigan, watching Ohio State, yeah, Ohio State went down to South Bend and won, but that was ugly. Oh, yeah. Michigan has not looked that great against Mac schools. Penn State's blowing everything. Didn't they hang 70 last time we talked? They hung like 73 on fucking somebody. Yeah, yeah. The in between, the, not the one we didn't do last week, but yeah. Yeah, two weeks ago. Yeah. The, for me, they're the most impressive team in the Big Ten right now. And it's it's all due to Drew Aller. He's he's kicking everyone's ass. Yeah, you know what? I can't argue that at all. Like I said, I don't even got Michigan in my top four just because the schedule's been fucking awful. But yeah, Drew Aller is the real yep. deal. Washington destroying Cal 59 to 31. If I could read my hand right, I think that's what he got. Penix 300. Yards in the air. Washington keeps rolling. Utah, 14 to 7 over UCLA. And this, I'm going to talk about this, man. This Oregon State and uh, Washington State game. Oregon State, Washington State. I had a 10 game fucking parlay. Only a $13 oh. bet. I was plus Fuck. 79 fucking hundred. $13 bet would have paid off a little over a thousand. And I fucking lost because of that 38 to 35 scores. The only one I didn't hit at. 9 out of 10. Oh, it pissed me the fuck off. Oregon State could not do shit that entire game against Washington State. Playing from behind cost me a thousand fucking dollars or else we would have had a more happy college football podcast for this yes. goddamn week. And we talked about a little bit about this game. But Ohio State 
looking like hell, pulling off and skinning their teams with only 10 players on the field for that last play for Notre Dame as they squeak out a 17-14 win in South Bend. Ohio State does look absolutely fucking atrocious. Defense looks pretty decent, but offensively, man, nothing going out there for Ohio State. I think I agree with you as more we're talking about this out loud. I think Ohio State's probably the third best team in the Big Ten right now. Is this the year Penn State finally knocks off those Buckeyes? I, like, based on the sample size we have right now, I think they're the most offensively uh, impressive team in the whole Big Ten. The West is fucking dog shit again. Michigan is, I don't know what J.G. McCarthy's doing over there. And like you brought up before the pod, the running game looks terrible. Yeah. Um, Ohio State, they they struggling with everything. Got to be Penn State. Yeah. Struggling, I am drunk. Struggling, I hate you, Wilson, I hate you. All right, my uh, top, what do I got? One, two, three, four, five. Yep, let me make sure I can count. I got my top five for college football. I got Georgia one, Texas two, Florida State three, Washington four. And I got Michigan number five. Agree or disagree? I think that's pretty solid, dude. Um, funny enough, on the Michigan topic, Valeni and Rico were talking about that yesterday for the same reasons you and I don't have them in our top. Yeah. And, like, I was arguing with people in the comments. They're like, well, the last two years, it's like, do you idiots not understand? The rankings are about now. Nobody gives a fuck what you did two years ago. Right. When we beat Ohio State. Who cares? That, Play it, somebody. Yeah. I, I, it, they got Texas next year. So, it, it, you know, if Texas plays like they are, which I'm, I'm guessing Texas is going gonna, is gonna to finish at least in the top five or top six this year, that's going to be a great matchup next season. But. Man, I mean, Michigan, honestly, it, it's been a very long time that I can remember where the first four games of the season, Michigan has anybody scheduled of any kind of relevancy. I, as a matter of fact, I, I can't even, I, Washington maybe? And that was, what, two years ago? And that was a pretty down Washington team at that fucking point. So, yeah, and then I don't they dumped that, that fucking home and home on my team. <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah, I see. Now, this year would have been awesome, though, to see Michigan go against Washington. Then you can yeah, really some talk some shit, Michigan fans, if you want to see how good you fucking really are. But I mean, and that's what it is at the end of the day. Like, the Michigan fans that will argue they belong there based on other things. Like, <laughs> if you don't fucking play anybody, you can't stake a claim to the number two team in the country when your quarterback has looked like shit, your running games look terrible, and your de- let's face it, your defense is winning you these games. Yeah. How's that going to go in league play, though, when you're playing these high-powered offenses? Yeah, and you know what's weird, too, about Michigan is they have a lot of undersized wide receivers. I think once you start getting these physical games against Penn State, um, even the Ohio State game, because Ohio State, even though offensively, it looks bad. Defensively, they're, they're holding up. I just... I, just, I I think Michigan's going to win the Big Ten. I think Michigan's going to beat Penn State. I think they're going to beat Ohio State. But I, once they get in the playoffs, Florida State, um, you know, obviously Georgia, I think they're going to run some fucking yeah. problems. Unless they can get their shit together, maybe they're not opening up the offense. But I highly doubt that as we're, what, four games into the season right here. So everyone that watches the pod knows I'm a Michigan State guy. And I um, just wanted to say briefly, fuck Mel Tucker. <laughs> Um, this team is trash. The talent on the roster is non-existent. I've never seen a Michigan State team this talentless, and that's saying a lot considering the John L. Smith era. But at least John L. had talent on that team. Um, yeah, I don't think they win another game this year. I think they lose out, and uh, I hope we get a good coach. I have a couple coaches in mind. Um, everyone's going to go read Justin Thine. Um, he's one of the um, Michigan State beat guys. He's got a great article about it, who he thinks is the top five. Uh, I don't need to input on that, but yeah, I don't want, I'll just say one thing. I don't want anybody that's over the age of 50. So if you have any stupid suggestions like that, you can just fuck off with them. <laughs> hey, are you talking about the presidency or are we talking about uh, <laughs> fucking Michigan State? Yeah, both. <laughs> fucking both. <laughs> Shit. Fuck me. So you really don't think they're going to win another game moving forward? No, I think Harlan Barnett is a great Spartan dog, but he's also a fucking moron. Oh, no. He is not fit out to be a head coach. Um, that team has looked totally unprepared to play the last two weeks. 
those coordinators on there are con men. Mal Tucker was a con man. <laughs> um, Scotty Hazleton and Jay Johnson don't deserve to be employed. The they're sticking with Noah Kim for for what? The guys the guy clearly doesn't have it. He's terrible. You've got two other young quarterbacks who, if you don't play them, guess what? They're gonna go in the Whoop. fucking portal. Yep. Or free agency. Hey, I'm not even, you know what? I'm not even calling it fucking the portal. Anymore. Yeah, it's we're, free agency. From now on, we're going to call it free agency because that's what the fuck it is. Yep. But, yeah, uh, yeah you've got a, a redshirt junior sitting there playing right now. The guy doesn't have it. See what you got because what you're doing right now isn't it. So hopefully the next coach comes in and fucking rips everyone a new asshole. Yeah, I, mean, you know, I, I think Michigan State's a, a top. 25 program not by ranking by it talent is. but i think for schools i think it is i mean they're backed by the excuse by the uh the school i mean they pour money into it facilities and wise and all that shit top 25 they programs. got a brand new facility right for mel tucker so i want to talk about why the hell the pac-12 is getting ripped apart probably the best conference in football right i mean you agree with that oh yeah utah right you got oregon you got colorado uh, who else we got? I know I'm missing another one yeah, in here. USC. Me. Yeah, USC. Right. Washington. I mean... Washington it, State. Oregon Washington, State. Yeah. Absolutely incredible talent for the Pac-12. And I know we're way past the point of trying to put everything back together. But my God, all these other conferences are just clamoring to grab these schools. It, it, I just don't get it. I don't get why they couldn't come together. And maybe it's more obvious because we're four games into the season and we're seeing how much talent, especially at that quarterback position out there. But just a damn shame that the Pac-12 could not keep it together out there, especially a traditional conference like that. I don't know how yeah. long they've been around. It's got to be, can't be that long behind the Big Ten, right? For as far as when the I wouldn't imagine so. Right. Just, just crazy shit out there. I wanted to touch on that. A little bit about the Pac-12 and the disaster of just letting that thing fall apart out there. That could have been some amazing football for the next at least three to four years. Especially you got Dion out there, all the excitement. I think just a waste. Oh, of we opportunity. forgot about them being fucking ranked, Colorado. Right, right. So just just so much talent out there, and it's just sad to see that thing just kind of. Yeah, it and is, nothing. and uh, you know these schools once they come to the Big Ten. I think a couple of them are probably going to be pretty dominant in that West. Um, you know my opinion on Fleck out there. He stinks. You know my opinion on Fickle out there at Wisconsin. I don't think he's going to be any good. So I, I see USC and Washington probably competing for that West crown every year now. Yeah, and the way that the SEC and Big Ten are going to be loaded, you're really going to have to go to a 16-team playoff. There's going to be so many teams with two or three losses that have a legit shot at uh, making the playoffs, but you got to expand it to 16 just because the talent in both those conferences is going to be pretty nuts next season. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I totally that's agree. That's it, man. That's it. Eight. All right. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. See you.